Hello and welcome to Just a Bite Podcast, where we discuss dining, blogging, and social media. Your host is Malika Bowling, author, blogger, and president of the Association of Food Bloggers. Hello, this is Malika Bowling with the Association of Food Bloggers. And today we're talking with Anthony Vancouvering, who is the CEO of Minds and Machines. And what they do is they have a lot of domain extensions that are available on the marketplace, and we just wanted to chat with him today and see how this can benefit food bloggers. So hello, Anthony. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to chat with us. Hi, Malika. Thanks for having me. Let's just talk about a little bit about you and uh, your background. Can you tell us how you got into this business? Well, like a lot of people on the internet, I got into the into it because I'm absolutely unqualified for other things. Um, <laughs> I, have, I have a degree in comparative literature and a history in publishing and various other things. And I got into the internet in the 90s um, when I discovered that <clears throat> most people were really not even aware that there are all these country code top level domains out there, like you know .uk for the United Kingdom and .fr for France, and so. I thought that would be very interesting to businesses who were concerned about their names being pirated around the world. And so I built a few businesses working with them. And then in 2009, because I'd become involved in internet governance issues, I was aware of the fact that ICANN, which is the body that regulates this part of the internet, was going to be taking applications for new top-level domains, or as you called them, extensions. Mm-hmm. And so our company raised some money, and we applied for quite a few of them. And of particular interest, possibly to your audience, are uh, dot cooking, and uh, perhaps somewhat also dot beer and dot vodka. We have a few uh, names that are related to to food. Oh well, that's pretty neat. So tell me, is this the dot cooking? How is is that just like a dot com and dot net? Is there any difference? Well, as far as the text, technical functioning goes, not, not a whit of difference. They, they work exactly the same. As far as meaning, I think they're quite different. What you've had in the past are things like com and net and org, which if they have any meaning, it's meaning at all, it's, it's quite vague at this point. So if you see something.com, you don't know if it's a bank, a blog, or a porn site. Um, right, but with that, right. with that cooking... You can be pretty sure that someone who paid for that name is going to do something about cooking. So are you seeing in the marketplace that people are switching from, like, let's say a .com or .net to something that's more relevant to them, like a .cooking, or are people instead just adding another website to their portfolio or their business? Well, we've seen a lot of both behaviors, and I would say that if you have an established brand that people know you by, it's a big ask to get you to switch. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what we see some people doing is say, yeah, I want the name, I like the name, Um, and maybe when I redo my website or my business cards or something like that, that's the good time to switch. We also see people who have, like many of us, been unable to find a very good name in .com, and so they're upgrading to uh, a much better name in in .cooking or, or one of the other new Level domains. With most of us, our bloggers that are that are um, using like a .com or something like that, they're, the sites are mostly in something called WordPress. Can you talk to me about what your platform is like and how easy it is to use? Well, we're working with uh, Mozart, uh, which we think is you know does everything that that WordPress does and a lot easier, and it has the additional amazing capability that you can share a website privately. So right now, you really just have two choices on the web, you know, shut up or broadcast to the world. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you want to share things with just a few people. Or or you might have a blog and then you have a side blog that's just for, you know, paid subscribers or your friends or something like that. So Mozart enables that. and, And it's also good because the... I've I've been a blogger and I've used WordPress, so I know how horrible it is to go choose a theme and get all ready and then realize I need a third column and I only have two. 
That means mm -hmm. I have to recreate right. everything. Or, you know, the the guy who built the theme is no longer helping and there's these new widgets I can't put in. So the great thing about Mozart is that the data is completely separate from the presentation. So you could, uh, you know, have your blog and work on it and then decide you want to change your look and it's not this, you know, big, you know, heaving and grunting and elephants blaring production that it is with WordPress. So it's got a quite a, uh, a few new wonderful features for bloggers and we're looking to introduce that in a couple of weeks into the marketplace. We're very excited about it. Great. Well, that's good to know. And I sort of jumped ahead because obviously with it being just the domain that you're registering, if you did want to, in fact, put WordPress on it, you could do that as well. Correct. Absolutely. You can use it yes. for anything that you use any other domain name for. You can have FTP, email, you know, anything you'd like. And then so let's say a blogger did register one of the domains and then they put WordPress on it and then they thought, oh, this is difficult. I want to change out to the, the, I think you said it was Mozart. That's right. Yeah, so if they wanted to change to that, how is it easy to integrate that and change swap over? Or? Yeah, it's one of the issues with, with WordPress and other blogging tools generally is they make it really hard for you to get your information out. As you know, you can back up your database, but that doesn't mean you have a nice clean copy of all your posts to put somewhere else. Of course. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's one of their strategies is to lock you in. That's not what we do, but when it comes to converting over to Mozart, uh, you know, I'm afraid it's a bit of cut and paste, and that's just a function of how WordPress and other blogging platforms work. All right. Well, that's still good to know, though. And then, Anthony, do you have any examples that you can discuss with us about maybe like a business or somebody's personal brand where they have maybe the one site that's a .com and then they've how they've integrated the .cooking? There's a couple of .cooking blogs that we like. Uh, one is called uh, epicurean.cooking, and mm -hmm. the other is called savorytart.cooking. And if you look at them, if you go there, you'll see that they they predate the introduction of .cooking, which was in uh, uh, late last year. Uh, so they've actually it appears that they've actually moved stuff over to the new new domain name. In yeah. fact, there's an excellent recipe for puff pastry. In savory tart, and you know, I've always had trouble with that. And like everyone else, I'm like, I don't know how to keep the butter from melting and all of that stuff. So, actually, I recommend it to your readers. Yeah, I just checked it out. I'm, I'm I've logged on there. It looks very nice, very uh, professionally done, but still very inviting and um, easily laid out and easy to read. So, it looks great. So we're thinking that. As people, you know, cooking is a big area, right? So when people think of cooking, part of it is what you guys do is blog about food and its preparation. But, you know, there's also a lot of room for people who are selling appliances, who are, uh, you know, chefs and schools and so on. So it's a very welcoming community. And we're doing a lot of work to reach out to people there to let them know that when you have a dot cooking, it's a real invitation to people who are interested in that to come. And, you know, they know what's going to be there. They know that it's going to be about food and its preparation and, and not something else. And we're seeing a lot of enthusiasm for it. What is the cost for if I wanted to register a domain? What is the average cost? Well, it's <clears throat> like a lot of things. There's a wholesale price. We're the registry, so we sell to registrars. Uh, we're also a registrar. That's where you buy it. The public buys it. And at mindsandmachines.com, it's $25 a year. A .com or .net is about 10 or $12 a year. Sort of. It's 10 or $12 for a really crappy name because that's all you'll find. If you want a good name in .com, you're actually looking at hundreds of thousands, and I think that's the correct comparison. You know, French country dot cooking. That's going to cost a lot of money on... Uh, in dot com. com, but it's twenty five dollars in dot cooking, and so if you have a specialty, or a region, or that of cooking that you like, or a region that you represent, say you're at, you know you're local to Portland or Austin or Tallahassee, then you can get those place names as well, or talk about you know what kind of things you want to do, and it really gives people an ability to see just from the domain name, the content behind it. And we also think this has a really positive effect on search. So 
you know, if people say type in French country cooking and they say frenchcountry.cooking, they're going to click on it. So you can yeah. do less as far as the optimization goes. Like yeah. So what 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 the names that we have on offer now and what they what they're good for is they they the name in itself is a really important keyword in the search algorithm as well as the content and the title tags and all the rest of the stuff that go into SEO. But in addition, we find that people are more are understanding that that's about cooking, so they'll click on it. And that in itself tells Google or your other search engine, yeah, people like that. And so it, it, it's a more relevant hit. Ah, okay, I see. So now if somebody did want to register a dot .cooking domain, where can they go do that? Well, they can go to uh, any registrar that's accredited by ICANN, and there are several hundred. Your your audience may have heard of GoDaddy or uh, or Hover or some of the other registrars, but you can also go to MindsAndMachines.com and purchase it there. Okay, but the the same the price is the same though. No matter where you go to register it, is that correct? Well, not quite, um, because. There's a, the registry sells at wholesale to registrars. You'll find registrars pricing them differently. Some of them price it very high and say, oh, that's fine because if you call us, we'll answer the phone and help you. Some are real, you know, sort of rock bottom prices with no support. Some bundle it with other services and so on. So you'll find a variety of prices out there. I think our price is, is you know, one of the lower ones. Probably the best thing to do is go register it through you, through you guys at mind, mindsandmachines.com. Yeah, we're the registry too, so. Well, this has been really great information, and I'm I'm happy to share it with uh, all the bloggers in our network and and any aspiring food bloggers as well. We also have, um, you know, we're making out a we're doing an active outreach for pioneers, and a pioneer is someone who we give a name to, even mm-hmm. a very valuable one. Um, in exchange for them being connected with this launch and our program. And to give you an example, in we're doing Dot Country for country music. Dolly Parton is, uh, uh, you know, our premier pioneer there. Uh, we're doing Dot Dot Beer, and we have a bunch of great, uh, you know, craft breweries as well as a a very large Danish brewery. We can't really say their name yet. And in Dot Surf, we have Quicksilver, the apparel company. So we're looking for people in the in the in the food area and cooking to come forward and say, "Hey, I'd like to work with you. I'd really like that great name, like French Country Dot Cooking or Los Angeles Dot Cooking or something like that, that they think they can use. And in exchange, we will uh, help promote them as they help promote us. So if you know of any. Mm-hmm. Uh, up-and-coming uh, food bloggers that you have your eye on. We'd sure like to know about them. Well, I'm sure there are a lot in our organization that will be listening to this and, and want to get involved. So Great. I'm sure you'll see some uh, registering soon. Great. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank you, Anthony, for taking the time to chat with us today. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. You take care.